Okay, on the last episode, we installed the crank after checking all the clearances, and now we go to the rest of the things, like the block, and it's all ready, right? So we will discuss the piston-to-wall clearance, the compression, and the goal that we're going to shoot for as far as the static compression goes. And of course, here, install the pistons, show you guys every single step that we do so it's gonna be all good and ready you know this one's for you Okay, now here we are. As you remember, we put assembly lube on the crank and this is supposed to spin a bit heavier than usual, but look at that, it spins freely. And here, we finished having the block bored out by the machine shop to 81.5. And yes, now let's go back to the workbench, let's go. And all right, here we are, the Arias Pistons. And we got the part number and we checked on the compression, so we'll talk about that later. Let me clip this here, the phone, all right. Now, we remove the rod caps one by one and then install the rod bearings, all right. Yeah, okay, we speed this up so it doesn't get too boring. And the reason why we're showing this is because it's really imperative and crucial to be organized when building an engine just like this you know be disorganized because it promotes consistency and if of course it doesn't it doesn't promote like forgetting a step or you know confusing for something because being organized like this teaches you to keep everything on track so when you're gonna spend your money make sure it goes to a shop like this all right, here now we install the bearings to the connecting rods. We'll start with the rod caps first, all right? Oh wait, let's get this apart. Okay, there. We'll just show you, you make sure the bearing saddles are clean because any dirt there will affect your oil clearances and that's no good, all right? So there you go, all right? It's that simple, yep. Okay, now let's just speed this up because it's going to get boring, right? There. So we, the reason why we keep things in order like this is because if it's not in order, you'll easily mix and match or mismatch the rod caps to the rods, and that's no good. So now here, the rods itself, because it's a B16, there's no oiling hole, hole, just an oil jet on the block and a slit on the side of the rods. Yep. Okay, now let's go back to the block and show you guys the ring gaps that we got, we shot for or we got. We got first. We gotta wipe this off, and look, it's already oiled well. But you can see the surface rust transfers to the shop towel. So this is really important that you keep wiping it clean every time you check the piston ring gaps and whatnot until the final assembly. All right, wipe it off like that just to make sure. There's no surface rust and it's clean, all right? Okay, now here, now let's try on the piston rings first. We're gonna, we shot, we're gonna shoot for point, between point zero 0.014, uh, point zero zero 0.014, zero 0.015, say, and 16. So let's see where it goes because we actually asked the machine shop to give us a point zero zero 0.003 piston to wall clearance, all right? We go let's check this all right there you go yep all right now we'll go get the filler gauge now there okay now this is a point zero 13 14 and 15 so we try the 13 first okay there oh it's quite loose or actually very loose on the gap so yep you don't need that Oh, we, that's not the measurement. So now let's check 14. Okay, it still goes in but catches a bit. And the 15, 
okay yeah 15 doesn't fit so we know this is a 0 0.014 top ring gap and that's the oil drain of course we resurfaced this good so yep okay now let's go back to the desk okay now here we installed the piston rings and oiled it with the mix that we have and it's been sitting here for 30 minutes this way the oil rests properly and i want to talk to you about this you can see this thrower here the ledge and the oil jet that's where it throws oil to lubricate the pins but on startup that's all dry so this is a must because trust me even though it runs fine and i've seen and, and disassembled a lot of engines that we saw the piston pins were galling you know there's a bit of scratch and when you think about it we always try to figure out how to get things really smooth and then you're gonna have a rough piston pin that's eating up horsepower so here we put assembly lube on the pin side of the rod under it there's the way this way on startup everything is well lubricated so wear is virtually non-existent right there now we try to balance this so it sits upright so that you know it keeps lubricating the pins wait okay don't move hopefully it doesn't fall okay now let's just speed it up so you guys can see that we do it for all the rest of the pistons and rods all right there you go okay don't move because you know imagine if that thing those rods fall it's fine but you know you just got to rearrange it it's gonna be a messy workbench all right and the last one yeah this gives an easier time on startup without wearing the piston pins all right and you know sorry about the rain guys you know tropical country okay let's start with the piston number one but also later we're gonna do the compression calculation and we'll talk about it later okay just wait up so now let's go to the block all right here we are we've uh, wiped it good so we start with piston number one okay we make sure it's that rod journal is perfectly straight we don't want to nip the journals okay we tap this to get it flush all right and then you know tighten it up again because you need to or click yeah okay now tap it in Yep, it was that simple, you know, so other people use a taper, tapered ring installer and whatnot. But, you know, when you do this often and when it's normal, it's easy like that. Okay, now we put the rod bolts and the red rod caps. Sorry. All right. Here, we actually pre-lubed this off scene so that, you know, we can just go straight into assembly. All right. We get the rod caps. Where is it? Where is it? We grab it here, there, and the rod bolts. All right. We actually hand tight it first because the initial step is 18 feet pounds torque and then 30. Okay, but yeah, we're going to make sure it's 18 on the first step later. But for now, it's going to be hand tight. This way, we can assemble the rest. All right. Okay, we can speed this up because you know. We don't want you getting bored and all that. So you get all the details without getting bored. All right. There you go. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to see it turns freely, but we got to prepare it for piston number two. So now let's invert the block. Make sure the journals is aligned for number two. Now we're going to get the number two pistons. Okay, let's go back to the workbench. Okay, now let's grab piston number two. All right, let's get the rod bolts and the cap. All right, let's get this. All right, let's go back to the block. It's all ready. Let's go. Here we are. Okay. The journal for number two is aligned already. Let's double check. All right, yeah, it's good. It's good. Okay, now once again, we tap the ring compressor to be perfectly flush onto the deck. Because if it is not, it's going to be hard to get all the rings in one stroke or in one tap, right? Okay, like this. It always has one more click, one more. There. Okay. Okay, this is okay. Look at this. Just one tap. The strong there. Like one hard enough blow and it's really good. 
Okay, now we turn this for the rod bolts and the rod cap. All right, yeah. Give okay, it on this way. It's, uh, it's already pre lubed so it's good. We speed it up. And of course, you got you got to subscribe if you're liking this. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, you'll be updated if you ever do. And then hit the like button. That's not gonna hurt. It's gonna help expand the video to a wider audience. All right. Thank you for that, guys. Thank you. All right. Now, see, we align this. So it's ready for number three. It's already aligned, all right? The journal is ready. But we got to double check later, just to be sure. Take a look at it now. Is it straight? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Okay, now back to the desk. We get piston number three. And then the rod caps and rod bolt. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. And of course, once we get to the block here, we're going to speed it up. This way it doesn't get too boring because you guys already know this. All right. Get flush there. And ta-da. Quite easy, right? Now the rod caps and the rod bolts. All right. There you go. All right. Yeah. And actually, you know, I must admit, it's kind of fun. Now, it's actually fun for me building engines. It's just, you know, just the way I like it, you know. And later, we're going to calculate the compression, the static compression of the Arias pistons and show you some details, all right? Okay, now we get piston number four, because the last one yeah, is going to be ready. It's going to be good. Okay, we go to the desk now. I mean, to the engine stand, sorry. Here we go. Here we go. Speed it up. Yep. And you can see the bore finish is really, really good. So this 81.5 bore finish is excellent. Now here, the number four rod cap and rod bolts. Get it there. All right. Yep. Faster, faster like that. Okay. Then we go grab the torque wrench so we can torque this baby. All right. Now here. First step is 16 feet pounds torque. Or 15 or 18. It just, you know, it just needs to be on the first step. Okay, so now let's speed it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then number two. Well, yeah, number two. And then number three. Alright. Okay. Just so you guys can hear the click, because that's quite addicting. Okay, now let's adjust the torque range for 30 feet pounds torque okay okay now here you can hear the click is a bit louder it's 30 feet pounds torque the final step all right there okay now let's go speed it up yeah 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 two all right yep okay now let's turn it and you can hear it Okay, here you see it's 30 now we're back to zero okay now you can hear when you turn the crank it sounds really really good you can hear the engine or the internals turn freely without obstruction or without you know without any trouble see it spins very very light now we look at the upside or the top yeah look at those dome all right this is starting to look really really good right and I, I did check you know what's the compression ratio of this pistons because the part numbers are under the pistons so i searched it and we're gonna get to that in a little bit all right let me just show you guys up close the beauty the b16 engine you know like it's it's like i think it, it's more like a small block chevy because everyone built it one way or another. And now when you look at that, yeah, the dome is really looking really good. Of course, the oil pump is blueprinted and you can click right here or we'll also have it in the description below on the video that we did the oil pumps, all right? And now we searched the part numbers for the pistons and we saw from Real Street Performance, it says here, look, 10.6 is to one compression and that has 4.2 cc dome so now let's calculate it in zeal auto works let's go okay now we click here to zeal auto works all right let's center this we go to the b series wait let's center this wait wait 
there right then we go with the 81.5 bar we gotta adjust that to get the accurate numbers and then 4.2 cc dome wait write it 4.2 cc dome all right and then we calculate let's see what we get what did we get as is okay there 10.0 is to one compression so 10 is to one compression but because the head has been, been milled 0 0.020 we're gonna add another 20 to make it 0 0.040 or one millimeter and let's here see it's 11.22 is to one so it's gonna be 11.2 is to one compression hopefully that improves the power right that's gonna be good and now i'll tell you guys as soon as we finish cleaning up the head we're gonna assemble it and we're gonna have that in a full video and then we're gonna degree the CTR cams, not because it's needed, but just to show you guys the lift and duration, the actual lift and duration. We have a Gen 1 B16 AEF cam here. We can check for you guys and get the specifications and we're trying to get a hold of a Gen 2 or EG cams and even a GSR B18C to show you guys the numbers that we get. And that will be a good video, right? So you know that is gonna be good. So you gotta subscribe. And of course, as soon as episode 4 is done, you can also click here for that.